We know from Newton's third law that when two objects interact, they apply forces to each other that are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. How do those forces change during a collision? How does this affect the motion of the objects? In this investigation, you will find out. This is impulse and change in velocity. In case you haven't learned this yet, one of the main goals of driving a car is to avoid having a collision. Unfortunately, this isn't always possible. Fortunately, automobile engineers know a lot about how to protect people because they understand the physics of collisions. After completing this investigation, you will too. We are going to analyze collisions between this cart and the force sensor attached to the end of the track. We need the mass of the cart for the analysis. The mass of the cart is 0.26 kilograms. This motion sensor will measure the velocity of the cart before, during, and after the collision. The force sensor will measure the force on the cart during the collision. We attach the spring to the force sensor to make the collision last a little longer. We've configured SparkView to display velocity versus time and force versus time on a graph. Since collisions happen over a short period of time, we set the data sample rate of the force sensor to 200 Hz. For each trial, we start data collection in SparkView and then give the cart a short push toward the force sensor. We can see where the collision occurred on the velocity graph and the force graph. On the velocity graph, the velocity changes from positive to negative during the collision. We can measure the velocity just before and just after the collision to find the change in velocity. Since the motion sensor measures moving away from it as positive, the velocity changes again from positive to negative during the collision. I just use the coordinate tool. And so just before the collision, the velocity was 0.7 meters per second. And just afterwards, it's negative 0.67. And so the change in velocity is going to be negative. The change in velocity would be the final velocity, negative 0.67 minus positive 0.7. And so I get 1.7. 3.7 for the change in velocity, but it'd be a negative change. On the force graph, the area under the curve is known as the impulse. To find the impulse, we need to measure the area under only the part of the graph where the collision occurred. So it might help to expand that out. And then we can use the selection tool to just select the part of the graph where the collision occurs. You can see it matches where the velocity changes to. And then we select statistics and now area. And so that comes out to 0.36. Notice the impulse is positive. The coordinate system used by the force sensor is opposite that used by the motion sensor. There are multiple ways to handle this. The change in velocity and the impulse are the same in the same direction and must have the same sign though. So you can make them both negative or make them both positive. Since it might be easier to deal with positive numbers, the lab handouts suggest you make them both positive. We need to collect data for four to five more trials that have a variety of initial velocities of the car. I'm gonna gradually change the push I give it, monitoring the values of the initial velocity as I go. Once we have at least five trials with a variety of initial velocities, we can start the analysis. So that's two. Three. Or real slow one. 
and then how about a real fast one? There, now we have enough data to analyze. So let's check out our data. We have uh, six collisions to analyze. So here's the last one, run six. You can see where the collision occurred from the force graph, and you can see the velocity changing from a positive to a negative, but their values, their magnitudes are very similar. So that's what I'm looking for for a good run. And run five, expand that. That looks pretty good. That was a really fast one and run four. Sometimes it helps to zoom in on just the collision part so you can see what's going on. That looks pretty good. Here's the velocity going in, velocity going out. These spikes here are my hand, when I put my hand in the way to push it, and when I put my hand here to catch it again. So you have to keep your hand out of the way during the collision. And then run three, uh-oh. Looks like I didn't keep my hand out of the way there. And we know that because here's where the collision was. This looks like the velocity afterwards, something like negative 0.6, but beforehand it's above four. So that was my hand in the way. So you can ignore, we only need five trials for the lab. So you can ignore run three, or we could go in and delete it. Let's check run two first before we do anything and run two, that looks good. There's a positive velocity, negative velocity right uh, before and after the collision. So to delete a run, I can go down here to the tools and say manage run. And I can delete the last one, delete all the runs. We wanna choose a run to delete. And that was run number three. And so I delete it. And you can still tell it was there, one, two, and then it doesn't show up, but that'll help you with the analysis if that run isn't there. Now you can make a graph using the change in velocity and impulse data. The lab handout will assist you. Using your graph, you'll discover the equation that relates the change in velocity to the impulse. You'll use your equation to answer questions about the lab and about new situations. Perhaps someday, you will use your equation to make cars safer, saving lives. That is the power of physics and engineering.